Council of Europe will launch a probe into pharmaceutical companies accused of manipulating swine flu data. This follows a claim by a renowned German scientist that vaccine manufacturers pressured the World Health Organization into declaring a swine flu pandemic seeking to increase profits. RT's Laura Emmett has more. It was supposed to be a deadly pandemic, but it's so far nothing more than a serious cold. And it's left a lasting headache as a debate rages over whether pharmaceutical companies deliberately misled governments about the seriousness of swine flu to make them stockpile vaccines. The legal standards organisation, the Council of Europe, will gather the arguments. Britain has spent a fortune on preparations. We've caused a great deal of stress to the population. People are very anxious about it. And we've distorted the priorities of our health service. And I believe when we have a thorough investigation and we look at this, uh, we'll discover that that's the story. The world has been subjected uh, to a stunt uh, for their own greedy interests of the pharmaceutical companies. European countries bought billions of dollars worth of vaccine from pharmaceutical companies including Baxter, GlaxoSmithKline yeah. and Sanofi Pasteur. Some of the contracts included a clause where governments could get out of buying the drugs if they were no longer needed, but some, notably ones with GlaxoSmithKline, did not. We continue to support governments in managing the H1N1 influenza pandemic. This includes ongoing discussions about existing orders for our pandemic vaccines. Governments all over Europe are now saddled with billions of dollars worth of unnecessary swine flu vaccine. They are trying to sell it, but supply now far exceeds demand. So because governments wanted to be seen to be acting decisively, the European taxpayer is finding himself seriously out of pocket. Health expert Gawain Toller says farmers will be farmers, and it's governments who should have been less gullible. Pharmaceutical companies, of course, have a huge economic interest in encouraging concern over health. I think you have to blame the governments for going along with it, for, for not having natural scepticism of the claims of somebody who has a financial interest. The government wanted to be seen to be doing something useful. Uh, and, in, and in that way, they encouraged the fear that then forced them to act. At the height of the pandemic, it was predicted that around 65,000 people in Britain would die. So far, there have been only 360. Critics of the World Health Organization, which dubbed swine flu a pandemic, said it was clear from early on that the illness the wouldn't be as serious as first thought. Also, it was initially believed that two vaccinations would be needed to protect against the virus. Later, it was found that one was enough. Now European governments are coming under fire for wasting billions of dollars on vaccines that would never be used. This does seem to have been a massive waste of money. Of course, it's the responsibility of the government to look out for these kind of crises as they're approaching. Of course, actually around the world, countries were ordering vaccines and so on, but no one seems to have gone over the top as much as Britain has. You know, yet again, Britain has led the world really in wasting taxpayers' money on a threat that either hasn't materialised or has turned out to be very different to the way it was anticipated. Germany, France and the UK say they want to sell off their stockpile of vaccines. While there are countries willing to buy, the passing of the global threat and millions of doses flooding the market means prices for the vaccine will plummet. And the epidemic's initial misdiagnosis means it may be a very expensive mistake. Laura Emmett, RT, London.